It's time to kick off the year and ruin everybody's power rankings. Hello and welcome everybody to the St Overwatch Steel Series Invitational. I'm Jen Lemmy Kiwi Pichette. I'll be your host for today. Hey, it's Steel Series is celebrating their 20th anniversary today, their glory story. So I made them this ugly brownie thing. It's it's a special occasion. There we go. There we go. There we go. Thank you for, for being there with me for that. Um, so Steel Series has been making high quality gaming gear for, for so many years. So we know we they know what they're doing. They make headsets, mice, keyboards, controllers, you name it, they, they probably made one. They were the first company to sponsor an esports team. They invented the gaming headset and they continue to innovate the esports space today. I'm actually wearing one of their headsets. So you guys are legally required to appreciate how good this looks right now. And the casters will tell you that as well. So go over to steelseries.com slash glory to learn how they've been changing esports for so many years. Now let's get into how today is going to be working. Uh, we've invited four Overwatch League teams to compete in a single elimination first to three bracket. Up to bat first, we have the Paris Eternal versus the Boston Uprising, followed by the Los Angeles Gladiators against the London Spitfire. All maps have been randomly selected in advance, no delay there, and the teams will be battling to get their hands on a $10,000 prize pool split between first and second place the bottom two is going to feel the wrath of reddit and you guys in chat and our analysts and speaking of our analysts joining me on the desk the brains also covering the action it's hex grams it's jaws and instead of fighting over who is going to look the best we all just wore the same hoodie we just already looked that good synergy on point hex i heard you clean today congrats how you been I mean, my place is always pretty clean. Um, I generally throw up a green screen behind me because like I, I got new art and I was like really happy with it. Then I realized my camera makes it look like I'm perpetually living on a hill. Uh, besides that point, I'm just excited, man. It's been like four, almost five months since the last Overwatch League match, since I've last casted. So I just want to see these teams. I, just, I was thinking about all the different changes that happened. And I think this year we've had some of the most turnover between uh, seasons from season three to season four. So I don't know what's going to happen. And that's my favorite thing. I like to be surprised. Hey, there's so much going on in Jaws. I see you're still grinding to get back into top 500. Maybe you're still there. How's your, how's your mental been, man? Yeah, it's been okay. Mental a little less so now that you show me your brownie thing. That looks like a leftover lasagna. <laughs> it's oh really God. ugly, and I've had a piece of it, yeah, so it tastes better ugly. than it looks, for sure. Well, that's fine. As long as it tastes good, that's all right. So we can get into our, our, our first discussion. So our first match up to bat, I already said, Paris Eternal versus the Boston Uprising. So unlike Boston, you guys know that Paris scrapped their entire roster, dead with the French dynasty. Now they're kind of going for a European powerhouse uh, with picking up uh, players from contenders Europe with varying levels of success. Uh, Jaws, we'll start with you. Who is a player on this roster that you're kind of most excited to see? Every EU player that's not had a chance to really make it, honestly. People like Get Amazed too, by the way, on the coaching role. You can't really forget uh, forget him, former Eagle Gaming superstar. Oh, this is the Boston Uprising. Uh, I thought we'd get <laughs> Paris there for a second. That's my bad. Um, the, the Boston Uprising, in fact. Oh, there we go. That's Paris. Tunnel. Yeah, okay. Paris. We're, we're okay, good. we're on then. <laughs> uh, all good. Yeah. So um, can't forget the the background stuff as well, and like people like Get Amazed, who's also been around for a long time too. But Naga, Oni God, uh, Ellie Vote, they Dan, they've been around for ever man like these guys have uh not really had the best chances in the league or just like no chances whatsoever like dan and naga of course i'm excited to see only got back in the action as well i always thought he was kind of sick but then i obviously had to fill in for some rather large shoes in decay last season so hopefully this time around with his eu brethren they can form a little better Yeah, I'm super excited to see Khan. I, I, I might be biased because I've casted a few of these players, but Khan was really hyped up as one of the best flex supports in uh, Contenders Europe. But Hex, we know that flex support is such a, a contested role. Do you think new talent have a chance to shine or who else are you looking forward to seeing? Well, I mean, I think that flex support is, is that role that can really elevate a team. And then when we start talking about Boston, we can get into that too. You can be a single bright spot on your team. If you're playing on and you're hitting every sleep or you're just getting those clutch nanos and you're going to be able to elevate your squad. I think I really like what Paris did. I mean, essentially, there's a couple different teams and some of them are in the tournament today who scrapped their entire roster. Uh, I mean, London kind of went a more traditional route, a, a kind of an uninspiring roster build. But Paris was like, we have all this talent in EU. Let's bring some of them up. 
up. But I also like what they did in adding some of these veterans on this team. Like you mentioned, Oni God, I mean, he's been around forever. You really want to talk to someone who grinded Path to Pro. He's been playing since 2016 competitively at a high level, finally got his shot. So maybe he can mentor some of these guys on what it takes to be a pro. But then if you really want to talk about like mentorship and big brains, you got Neptuno there to be the stabilizing force at main support to calm everyone down. He's known as a great shot caller, doesn't get too hyped up, doesn't get too... Uh, you know, out there with things. So I think I like what, how they've built it. They brought in a lot of young, uh, young talent, exciting talent with high ceilings. And then they brought in some old veterans to kind of have this calming presence. Yeah, absolutely right. I'm so excited to see new new talent make their names known uh, this season. This is the first time we're seeing these rosters, so we can only speculate how well this is going to go. But one player, you know, Paris scrapped the whole French roster, but one of those Frenchies that we do miss is Soon, who finds himself on the Boston Uprising. Jaws, he's going to be competing against his former team for the first time. What kind of mindset uh, do you think he's going to be in about this match? Probably just I'm a win. Just let me win real quick. <laughs> let me uh, let me send these guys back to EU contenders, bro. Like I think that's probably on his mind. Of course, Soon's been around forever as well. And Boston Uprising is really funny as a as a franchise. I've been looking at the roster moves over the off season, of course, and they've just the entirety of the Boston Uprising as a, as a franchise, including their uh, academy team, Uprising Academy. It's like, well, WGS, uh, we'll take we'll take one, we'll take two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No, they just keep picking from WGS, man. They got Valentine Faith, they got IM37 as well, the elusive speed runner of the uh the Overwatch League, almost <laughs> heading for that commissioner role. Like, I'm excited to see Boston this season, honestly. It's it's uh, there is a big big question mark of who they're actually gonna play, you know, fusions or uh stand one, of course, because they could do half and half, half Korean, half uh, Western player, or they could do mostly Korean and then one Western player on the team. So like, I'm very curious how they're actually going to play it here because this is the taste test for Overwatch League, of course, like you were saying, Lemon. Yeah, Boston, at least, kind of uh, alternatively to Paris, who are just brand new, Boston at least built up the from those existing pieces of Fusion's Color Hex, Young Bung, who have just been there for so long. They've added Lori as a head coach, very well respected amongst the players and the coaches, uh, brought in that trio from WGS of Contenders Korea with Valentine, Fate, I'm 37, as you already mentioned. Um, Hex, how hopeful are you about the Boston Uprising? Is this kind of the year of the year of the Boston Uprising? I mean, I think it's got to be better than last year, right? I mean, they, they really struggled last year. I think I, I like a lot of the moves that they made. This has been a franchise that's always kind of been built from the ground up as far as we're going to scout players, we're going to get diamonds in the rough, and they had a really nice season one. They've had some flashes. And even towards the end of last year, they had some flashes out of players. Luckily, they kept some of their best players. I think the best player on the roster last year was very easily Myungbong. Uh, I think he's just an absolute nut on Ana. But, I mean, I want to see these new WGS Phoenix players come in and especially in the coaching ecosphere they have i think it's really smart to bring in two or three uh people from a team like that so that they don't feel like a fish out of water and now they have their whole cohesive unit and i just want to see what valentine has like we we've seen him in contenders we've seen his play it's been absolutely nuts stand one is a decent tank we'll see how he fits into this because he didn't really get to play a ton last year uh but you've got some veterans a nice mix and as far as soon facing like a you know a former team like i just think i, I love french players because they do take it personally and they do like I think of AKM and AKM and Unko and Soon and it's just like yeah we're just gonna crush them like I just love how they go about the game so I'm really excited for it and I think they have a lot of versatility on the DPS and I think that that support line has improved the big question for Boston going forward is is the tank line gonna be able to to hold up and if they're even average I think Boston could be a yeah, top 10 team. And Jaws, I'm, br I'm going to bring up some starters that you were questioning about. So we did get word that Stand 1 will be uh, standing in. And I'm 37 is starting over soon, which we thought was interesting. Uh, what do you make of those starters? Um, maybe just going with pure comfort. Like a lot of these players have played together before in WGS. So as your first taste test against other teams, yeah, you probably want to go for someone that's a little bit more comfortable. And then you can start experimenting later on as well. Or of course, they just normally you'd put maybe someone like soon on the back burner for a time being, you know, get them out when the when the trace is needed. Uh, in these comps, which are or like in this meta, sorry, where the comps are so varied, I think comfortablenessness. Com is that a word? Comfortableness. <laughs> is it? You, you made it. Sure, it is now. I mean, 
<laughs> I've been not casting for like six months, man. Like it's been a long time. I haven't read a dictionary in a long time either, or a Theosaurus, in fact, ever. But I think um, just being the most comfortable in a team is important for uh, a meta that's so varied currently. So, hey, a lot of you play together on WGS. Hey, you just jump in real quick and uh, and bash these guys around because at the end of the day, if you're not comfortable with the rest of your team, especially in metas that you need to keep switching up things, like you go to Rush or you go to a Dive or like uh, Echo and Sombra and stuff, like you're not going to be doing well. You just need to have a good flow of communication and a good level of uh, comfortableness on, on the team. <laughs> It sounds like our match is ready to begin soon. So I will leave you all in the very capable, loving, tender hands of Hex and Jaws. Take it away, guys. Yay. Let's go, Hex. We're back. Yeah, yeah I think you're you're getting warmed up. Comfortiveness, whatever. You know? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write in my dictionary real quick in a second. Don't worry. <laughs> it's no, it's going to it's my repertoire. They do add words to the dictionary, so maybe you can uh, you know, lo lobby for it. We're going to kick it off on Nepal here on Control. Of course, Hybrid, Escort, Assault, and Control will be next. Format is going to be very familiar to everybody. First to three, and then tiebreakers and whatnot. These first matches are actually really important, you know, because everyone wants to play for pride, but only first place and second place get that uh, ever elusive cash money. So if you go out here, this is not double elimination. Like, you get to play, but then you're going home empty-handed, Jaws. Yeah, it's also first of three, two, not best of three. So yeah. worth keeping in mind as well. By the way, how is Myumbong still on Boston Uprising? Like actual diamond hands from the Boston Uprising <laughs> uh, staff, right? Like that guy was probably the best player on that team last year. Some of his honor yeah. player on Gibraltar team. I actually remember casting that match. My memory is pretty bad mm -hmm. when it comes to just anything, but like Myumbong's honor on Gibraltar. I'll have to go find the exact VOD and rewatch it later, but what a ridiculous performance like how on earth did they manage to clutch on hold to him because i think any team would want to have someone like myongbong on their roster right yeah but i actually seeing his tweets and stuff and seeing like around that time where people were uh, changing teams and people going free agent and whatnot he was like no i want to stick with the uprising i want to try my very hardest and i want to make sure we kind of get rid of this stigma that boston rising does have and uh carry on right. into uh, into the 2021 season i think one of the things i was most impressed about beyond just doing vod review and watching his insane sleeps and everything like that was just that he still kept playing at a high level even though boston was out of it never mind we're in match let's go paris eternal boston uprising we'll be running on may here early on and it's one of those great points for me oh well yeah i mean this Pretty good, apart from uh, obviously the Echo on the other team that can copy you and then instantly get a blizzard. That's uh, not too helpful whatsoever. Paris Eternal running pure rush. Nice little dive. Actually, beautiful nade in the bat line. Ellie Boat couldn't quite eat that one. Of course, don't forget the focusing laser from the uh, Echo does do double damage against shields and does a whole lot of damage to uh, Only God as well. He ends up falling. Faith does end up falling down as well. It's another nade for Myumbong. I'm already singing his praises, by the way. He's it two <laughs> massive anti nades. And Paris Eternal, well, they don't really know where their heads are. Uh, Neptunos is on the floor, and uh, Paris Eternal are going to go running as the boss not rising should manage to cap the point as soon as they do force people away. I mean, they're still managing to fight and hold on, but now the Nano is on Valentine. He's got the copy ready to go, but he doesn't need it. There goes Dan. There goes Only God. And goodbye to your mech, Ellie Bode. He doesn't get saved with the immortality field, but boss not rising in the end do manage to cap the point. I kept the point in. Really, the player I really want to watch. We know how good that Myungbong is going to be. Is going to be Valentine because this guy's Echo is absolutely out of this world right now. He's probably one of the reasons people want Echo nerfs. But the thing is, you can try to switch to Hit Scan to deal with him, but he can take down Hit Scans as Echo. He's that elusive. The aim is that much on point, and you see the finishing blows that come through for him. So I think that was probably the the most heralded pickup that Boston made in the offseason. Oh, well, now what are we looking at? EMP. Copy as well, available for Valentine. Not sure they're actually going to need it. Dan does find a nice little pin on the Wrecking Ball, but he's going to be able to survive and live, uh, live another day. Neptuno ends up going down as well. I mean, one EMP to gain you a few extra percent, and just finding that one pick off, especially Neptuno, is pretty important because no one can speed you in now, so you have to go for a full reset. Yeah, I mean, they're going to have the ultimates up here, so you want to get sped in and put the wall up, try to force out some of those denying ultimates. The ball's <laughs> going to come around corner. 
<laughs> There's the copy as well. Oh, Valentine, he's holding shield. He's got the shadow already. He's got eight seconds left as well of his ultimate available. Might be able to get another shadow. Not quite, but the damage has been done. Only God, Ellie, vote. They fall over. And all the meanwhile, Khan actually got slept, so he couldn't even heal his team. What's not rising? Just putting on an absolute showcase with this comp. They should be able to just take the map now. Maybe Paris Eternal get a... Uh, going to say here they have got blizzard but it's looking rather unlikely especially as faith now has uh, the rally yeah it's gonna be good i mean we're getting down to it for paris they are gonna have to go in here and at some points naga's just gonna have to yeet in this blizzard and hope for the best you want to get the diva out of the way and just pray oh, nice shot <laughs> All right, Valentine's dead. So it's only God, though. Nice little beat. Naga is hacked. Can't use the blizzard just yet, but managing to isolate the supports in the back. Faith and Mjumpon are going to get caught out a little bit on the sides. I mean, now at this point, if you're up wise, you just want to be able to stall the point, maybe find picks. Immortality field already used by Khan, so he's a little bit more vulnerable as Naga makes his way onto the point to continue this OT. Valentine's already back, and now only one healer available for the Paris Eternal. Mjumpon finishes off Dan, but there's still trades going backwards and forwards as Ellie Boat manages to kill off Valentine. They flip for the Eternal as the boss not rising now have to go again, but Hex. They're fine. Oh, you know what they say about <laughs> control? Uh, it's uh, yeah. pretty fun when you cap first. Since they've got EMP, they've got mines, they've got nano, and Valentine's definitely going to have copy for next fight. Yeah, I mean, they're absolutely fine. You just look at the far left, you look at Sombra's got EMP, and that's usually enough alone to win a single fight. So Stan 1's going to go in there being the disruption ball that he is. Drop some mines, make sure no one can get out of there. Got to be a little bit careful because better soldiers back in the back line and, and Batiste. <laughs> he actually is better soldier almost. Oh, man. I I, I kind of wish the Tactical Visor could headshot, but then it would be too OP. I don't know. So I just got legs, man. That's what he's good for. Run the <laughs> yep. I'm 37 on the point. He's got the EMP. Nothing to interrupt it. Nice little self-destruct juices there from Ellie Boat. Does manage to find Myung Bomb, but two people from the Eternal are already dead. He finds the remake as only God is fighting alone on the sidelines. He's going to get chased around in Valentine with the copy. Just ego dueling only God. It was a bit of a 2v1 as Steve was there as well, but he didn't do it. And there's the Diva Mech as well. Early votes uh, a little bit worse for wear. And OT has been triggered. The boss and Uprising are going to recap. Here comes the Blizzard from Naga, but it's all over now. Nothing you can do. And the boss and Uprising claim the first round. It, so far, the pieces that they've added have looked pretty good. I mean, you've got I am 37 probably coming into Boston to pick up that role that uh, Jerry is vacating. I am 37, I believe, refers to how old McCree is. Uh, we'll see a McCree god. We saw Jerry play a lot of that last year. But really, I think Boston made a nice move in picking up Stand One. Not to say that Fusions is a bad tank, but is somewhat of a limited uh, hero pool. There's a lot of times where he's just not great on the heroes that aren't Reinhardt. Stand One's just got a, a much more well rounded pool and i think uh, punk actually played really well last year he provided a spark to this team a little yeah. bit so they filled they filled a lot of gaps in their roster and so far looking like a more complete team but it's been one round of control yeah punk has been um, was uh, pretty good last year it's, it is it is a shame that boss not rising are uh, do have that stigma about them like i was talking a little bit earlier uh, and now with this brand new invigorated roster it must feel pretty good I say anti nade by, uh, by Khan. Naga manages to pick up Punk and the rush comp for the Paris Eternal just bowling over you with Only God and Dan is a, <laughs> not a, a match apparently for IM37 who clicks on Only God's head and uh, yeah, Ellie Boat's gone down as well. And the Paris Eternal are going to scurry for this mega health back room. Sam one did end up falling, so it's a nice little even trade there. <laughs> Dynamite from Naga does take out IM37, but a uh, wall is going to stop Valentine and Faith from taking any damage. Luckily enough, though, Dan is on the point to make sure the Uprising cannot cap. Uh, this is just like uh, the lower cinematic. It's just been all McCree versus Ash early on here. Only guy's going to go in and try to put some pressure on it. But as you mentioned, the first capture is so important. Paris is going to be able to take that one. And the nice thing is, is Naga put in so much damage that you can just toss Bob on the point whenever you want. I wonder what happened there, but he just got elevated from the wall. <laughs> he was the only one on that other side. Oh, lovely anti nade. Is it going to matter? I don't think so. The Emotali field does a good job of keeping everybody alive for the time being. Myanmar does end up going down to only goal, but it doesn't matter. Valentine picks up a key piece, and that will be the uprising going for the cat. 
Should be able to flip this one back here. We'll see. I mean, I, I think that Naga would have liked to stay alive a little longer, obviously, so that you could at least contest the point yeah. with Bob, because every percentage and the way he's putting out damage probably would have had a Bob for the next fight. But now Paris has the opportunity to maybe throw in a Nano here. It'd be interesting to see who they Nano. I'm terrified of Nano Brig, even though it's not the best thing to do, but Nano Brig is nigh unkillable. That's a lot of books. Ooh! <laughs> Can't nano him anymore! Can't nano him to the dead! Oh boy, that is, uh, yeah. Oh, they got the cap at least, I guess, and Samwon does end up going down, but I am 37, just cleaning house. There's a little cheeky roll over the pit as well. They do manage to find the recap, but at least Paris Eternal did kind of stem the bleeding a little bit there, but all for naught at the end of it. Yeah, and I think we're seeing I am 37 elevate his gameplay. I think it, the very first time we saw him in the Overwatch League in Season 2, it was kind of the speed run, but now he's had time to work in a team environment, to work with teammates, and he looks way better than I remember him looking back then. Okay, Uprising, they're near a grab. They have uh, the Shatter and the Beat, so they could just do the old-fashioned and run it down. And uh, it doesn't look like they're going to. Ellie Bo, uh, you might be dead, maybe. Nice little nade on him, but he's on the floor now. He can't really do all too much. Just down one lays down the hammer. There's the beat being dropped as well as Punk with the Graviton Surge has it available. Can they kill any from, from this Elibo grab? I'm not sure they can. Sam One's just going to swing into Punk's one, and uh, yep, that's uh, history, the Uprising. However, once again, they do manage to cap the point, Hex. Slowly but surely, they're gaining percent, and they actually still have more than the Uprising. I mean, objectives are all well and good, but sometimes you're sacrificing position to get those objectives and you end up You're sacrificing the, fight, the rest so... of your teammate is yeah. what you're sacrificing. I mean, yeah. you're, one person goes to the point, gets the cap, the rest of your team dies, so... Unfortunate. Well, we'll see how they go. I mean, Paris doesn't have anything to work with. You're looking at pretty much single-digit ultimate charge across the board, except for Bob. Bob can't do it all by himself. Window's up. Noon, through the window, that's a lot of damage! Oh, I have 37! Take it out, Neptuno. Oh, my word. Boston Uprising. This is what you want to see. Like we said before in the in the pregame, Hex, a lot of these players brand new to the league. A lot of these players brand new to Boston Uprising. This is what we wanted to see. Is this Boston Uprising's year? I know. Two rounds of control. You can already tell throughout the whole year how they're going to do. There's the Bob <laughs> from the side. Naga's uh, eventually going to make his way to the point, but he's still going to have to duel out Iron 37. Only got ends up falling. Naga loses the duel, and that will be overtime triggered, Hex. Iron 37 is just going to park his booty on the point, and that will be the cap and the map. Boston Uprising 1 0 in the series. And it's pretty much, uh, look, it's early, um, but since we haven't had Overwatch for four months, we're all going to be very reactionary based on this. It looks like the pieces that they've added no, are... It now. Boston not rising, best team in the league, rank yeah. one. Yeah, power, power rankings and shambles right now. Yeah. But I think we, when we saw the, the tournament structure and everything, we kind of assumed that Boston was going to do well just because the expectations we have for all of these contenders players. And I think Valentine played very well. I'm actually, uh, you know... Having seen I am 37 in season two, and he hadn't really played a lot of pro uh, organized play before. And I think that hurt him a little bit going right from maybe just being a, like a ladder star and open division all the way up to the Overwatch League, maybe a little overwhelming. He was underwhelming when those performances happened, but now he's had time to work on WGS, to work with some of these teammates. And I mean, the mechanics are there. So I think a lot of people love Jerry on Boston, but in this very short sample size, I think they found a pretty competent McCree replacement at the very least. I love Jerry. I miss Jerry. Who doesn't love Jerry? Every yeah, day. Everyone, lo everyone loves During Jerry. During the off season, I've uh, <laughs> erected a small shrine to Jerry in the corner of my room. And every single day I watch one of his VODs to make sure his name lives on. I'm looking forward to seeing uh, Boss Not Rising later on. I mean, <sighs> I don't want to jinx it or anything, but they are looking pretty good, right? At the yeah. end of the day, if you do replace uh, the majority of your team, you're expecting to do better than you did last year. I mean, that that is the executive decision to go, okay, it wasn't working at all. We need some brand new players. And I like the fact that Peter Valentine, who only has only just turned 18 as well, mind you. And a lot of the WGS players who have pre bank synergy already, although it could be that curse as well, where it's like, well, I mean, they had synergy in contenders and they had synergy on this team or whatever. And then they come in and then they just get kind of dominated because the play at overwatch league level is just that much more elevated.
Yeah, and we're going to really see that put to the test as we go to maps that aren't control, because control is always kind of like, hey, it's variable, it's kind of brawly, you win first fight, you win control most of the time. And now we're going on maps where it's a lot of uh, set plays and rotations, and how is that going to work out? But, you know, very early reactions are the talent that they've added looks really, really strong, and they've kept the, the right pieces. I think what Boston did really well in, in the rebuilding of the team is adding versatility. I mean, just adding stand one, and now you've got someone who can play a comp competent ball, a competent Orissa, you know, maybe their Winston gameplay still has some holes in it too, but then you've still got Fusions, who's a great leader on this team, but now you've rounded out the DPS as well. I think it's going to allow Color Hex when he comes in to really specialize in projectiles, because now he doesn't have to play everything that they asked him. You've got Soon, <laughs> who was uh, runner-up in our Widow 1v1 in the All-Star matchup. I think he was runner-up, I think. Yeah, or he won it. Counts. It was him or Linkser. Yeah, obviously All-Star events count, but Valentine is living up to the, the book as well so far too and right now in this meta where echo is just absolutely so strong i think valentine has an opportunity to really come out of the gate swinging like even echo it, not even just in this meta like echo in general is pretty it's pretty, pretty good. strong the the rate you are able to charge up your all i mean look at one shot from mccree yeah that's 20 percent ult charge from a body shot onto uh onto a lucio and being able to put yourself in the back line as well and transform into something like a rhyme, which we saw he did. Um, you j literally just fly them, hit Q on the rhyme, boom, you're in the back line already where Ryan it wants to be just swinging away. You get the shadow pretty quickly. We saw a lot actually of um, uh, just ridiculous Echo plays uh, in the Overwatch League last season when um, Echo was released. Double pulse bombs. You can get, almost get a triple pulse bomb as well if you are uh, uh, in the back line and no one's actually guarding against you. Echo in general is pretty strong and good at evading these kind of rush comps as well. Like the May, like the McCree, you can kind of hide around the terrain. Plus, mm -hmm. you can just escape the May pretty easily. We only really saw one kill on the Echo from the May, but you're not really aiming for that. You're going for the tanks ready to freeze them up. Like Echo's a good hero, man. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, well, I mean, it's a Swiss Army knife, too, because you just get to select which ult that you want during that time. Is that, Are we holding? Do we need to be aggressive? Should I tank ultimate here? I mean, you just have all of it in your book. Like, you really do expect to get the ultimate off of whatever hero you pick, right? It, I think it's it's largely considered a failure if you don't get their ultimate from your ultimate because she's, you know, not that great and just adding another player out of the squad, but you're using that ultimate. So do we need self-destruct? Do we need shatter? Do we need pulse bomb? Oh, here's a McCree because the Lucio's dancing on the point. It's just, yeah, I mean, I would agree with you, Jaws, that Echo is a good player. Good hero, good hero. You know what else is a good hero? Brig, Brig's pretty good too. She hits Rally <laughs> and then you don't die. And then you run at people and you swing at them. I uh, <clears throat> I will agree with you what you said earlier about Nano Brig being scary. It's pretty terrifying when you have a uh, a 2,000 HP healing <laughs> DPS tank on your team with Nano. It's pretty sick. Um, I did see a clip actually the other day on Twitter. I can't remember if I retweeted or not. But the <laughs> there was this Reinhardt player trying to wail away at this Brig. And the Brig just gets all the support and pocket in the world and gets a Nano and everything. And it took them... I don't know, I saw it like 30 seconds to actually kill her. Like, it was so funny. It's actually slightly painful to watch main tank players, especially play Ryan, just get bullied by Brig, but that's just well, how I mean, it is. Look, that's that's the life they've chosen. You know, they're, they're masochists. the life they've chosen. Yeah, you know, I they mean, chose it when Overwatch uh, released. Fusions was like, yeah, you know what? I'm going to play Ryan knowing that Brig is just going to yeah, roll over me. Look, that's just how the world works. So you start out, Ryan's this great hero, and he's in every meta, and super you're just fun. like super, super fun and, and great. And then, you know, life changes and, th and things happen. And, and now I think there's something mentally that connects all Ryan players. Like all the Ryan mains that I've known always have something like a little bit like little bit of self-loathing in them <laughs> you know it's like you want to kind of get beat up a little bit but then he can have amazing plays as well but yeah um yeah brig is, is still one of those heroes that can just be really frustrating because even if you ignore her you're in trouble but it takes like four people to focus fire at the same time i think they've come close to balancing so we'll figure it out i mean the balance changes all the time i'm just really excited for this meta specifically because it's going yeah. to be a lot of different stuff right it doesn't seem like we're just gonna be like this is the map you run this on this team's right like it's not gonna be stale um well obviously it can't be we're just getting into it but i, I don't think it's going to be just based on the amount of heroes that we we see play so far
Yeah, I mean, it's really good. Uh, at the end of the day, that's what you want, right? A lot of variety. Um, yeah, I know we got that year of goats. Goats was cool, but, you know, for, for a was year it? straight. Was uh, it? Okay, so I was a Zen player, so yes, it's, it was absolutely <laughs> fun. I just get to click heads all day from behind shields. It was sick. Um, but from a lot of the players that I've spoken to, it's very much about what your team's comfortable with. And uh, obviously, it does depend on what the enemy team's running and the map choice, of course. But at the end of the day... Um, if you're more comfortable running one comp than the other, you're more than likely going to excel yeah. on that comp. Um, especially on these kind of rush uh, comps too, if you're just able to get on one target. And you can see uh, the boss Nut Rise and go for this more dive style. Ball has just been a spectacular pick, both in solo queue and obviously competitive play. Although just saying, Cloudy did get rank one on Reinhardt the other day. And uh, I believe Shock got rank two on Ryan. So Ryan main yeah. stand up. And you can see Paris Eternal doing the same kind of thing. They're actually just going to run the sim though. Uh, Hex, a TV behind them. Yeah, I mean, Sim to get in and probably rotate up the stairs is usually one of the plays they're going to set up here. Yeah, take high ground okay. immediately. Ooh. And melted. <laughs> that's that's huge. Uh, that's the best pick that you want. And that's the second best pick that you want. Now you've got no healers if you're uprising. A lot of sustainability on uh, stand one on that ball. But yeah, you ain't going to last too long if you're someone like an Echo. Beautiful rotation from the Paris Eternal, just running this rush style, like I was saying. I wonder if any god does end up switching um, from the sim, or they just kind of keep it, because they can just continue to teleport onto the back. Yeah. It's, it's less good after first point, but there is still the world in which you can just go up to uh, the secondary stairs, like over uh, hub. Uh, it's hover library, I always mix up those calls. But yeah, it's going- behind them? I don't oh, know. Oh, why, why am I questioning that? Of course it's the ball player that's behind the team. They were trying to teleport and chase after him. Okay, yeah, there you go. So only got actually changed over now to the Kree. A bit more, a uh, little bit more DPS in the sim can from a, a longer range. Plus, obviously, you've got the stun on the ball. Yeah, well, it's, it's good for the ball. It's good for the Sombra. It kind of puts some pressure onto the Echo as well. So a really nice switch up here. They're going to put oh. window down and just continue to roll. Oh, my word. That window. Only God just clicking heads left, right, and center. You saw M37 there try to get a hack on somebody, but everybody kind of dipped out of his LOS just in time. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see as, as the meta evolves and as we learn more about these teams, who has good Sombras and not, because I feel like when we enter Sombra metas, that ends up being the deciding factor in a lot of these matches. And, you know, overall, the Overwatch League doesn't have a ton of great standout Sombra players. A lot of teams are happy to have someone who's decent. Oh. This is just a steamroll. Yongbok and Faith are already dead again. Stan 1 uses the mines. And now you're thinking, yeah, maybe we should switch up comp if you're uh, the boss not rising. I think Stan 1 maybe switches ball. Uh, although, it's still pretty good. There's a lot of high ground on this, uh, on this uh, last point. There's no way they're securing this or uh, recapping or recontesting. I'm 37? No, there's no way. Yeah, so that gets capped. 538, by the way, X on King's Road. Pretty ridiculous yeah. speed run here from this. Uh, I mean, this is a map that we've seen teams speed run time and time again. Once you get going, it can be very difficult for the defense to set up Ooh. until you get to this point. I have 37 going down there hurts because I think he's been wanting to use this ultimate for like the last two fights and they've just been yeah. absolutely shutting it down. Car driver, perfect matrix usage there from Ellie Boat. Stand one is going to roll away all the way back to spawn. Speed boost on the high noon. Nice little sleep. Onto the Rhine, Punk gets nanoed, there's the EMP, now they're going to engage, Valentine is stunned, does manage to find the copy on the Rhine, but if Blizzard is going to hold him in place, Graviton turns launch from downtown, but the Immortality Code is going to save him for now. Sam 1 still trying to knock people in, another big shadow comes through, but nothing really happening right now, Naga does end up falling, but Myongbong is traded, Khan goes bright purple and taken out by Sam 1 in the back line. Spawn advantage still remains here, of course, for the defenders, but if you have any vote and Dan on the payload. There's not really much right now. The boss not rising could do is they've thrown all the ults in. Face going to be able to come back with the rally, but they're in the danger zone right now. Yeah, it's actually looking really bad. I have no idea how Neptuno was able to stay alive there because his other support was actually out of the mix. It does seem like Boston's throwing everything they have in it. There is that Brig coming in with the rally. Going to buy them a little bit of time at the very least. But now Boston's bank is empty. We'll see if we can have some great hit scan play to stabilize from IM37 as he switches over to the Ash. Okay, Valentine just wants to blast somebody when they do get knocked up. Khan is already so low yet again. Youngbong just 100% accuracy, it feels like, uh, with these. <laughs> they, oh my, wait, what? I got a second. Did Naga just trap them all in with Faith and Punk and Valentine? Okay, I think that was a bit of anti-synergy there from uh, Naga. <laughs> just walled the rest of his teammates in against Brig. 
Oh, now they're staggering for as long as he can as well. Unfortunate. Whoop. Oops, Daisy. <laughs> yeah, a slept and executed May gonna put a smile on a lot of people's faces. But yeah, Boston has absolutely stabilized right now. There's 3.30 left on the clock and they're gonna have tank ultimate and a nano ready to go. See if Paris can get something going here with this rush comp. They are gonna have another blizzard going and there's nothing really to stop it from the Boston Uprising. So you might wanna play it a little bit slow, try to launch in the blizzard and win out for that. Yeah, it's gonna be a little bit more tough than you think though. Just because they're going to be able to play so split. I'm 37, getting dropping yeah. down, doesn't want to get headshot. Antine's already dead, though. Now they can march forward. He does have the copy available when he comes back from the spawn, but will the fight last that long? I'm not entirely sure. Definitely will now, as the uh, Blizzard's going to come out, as well as those lines to separate everybody. Naga falls, Punk to follow, Only God finds two, as Faith ends up falling down as well. Valentine's eventually back, trying to find a copy target. Probably Ryan at this stage of the game. There's the beam, 50% or a billion extra percent extra damage when they're low 50%. Copy onto the D.Va. They do just try and sort out for as long as possible. Stam one and Punk are going to return to the three as Punk does have the ult available to him as well. So this looks like a hold for the time being for the boss not right. Yeah, it's a great pick of the duplicate ability there to go to the D.Va at the end because it is such a great stall out. And then you get to control the space with the ultimate that you're going to build up in the self-destruct right around the corner there. So great play. And they got here with about five minutes remaining and we're down to about two minutes, Jaws. Paris is going to have to find a way to push into a rally and a grav. And I can't think of two worse ultimates that uh, you'd have to push into to finish out a map. Oh, yeah. I mean, what do you want to do here if you're Khan? You want to use that window fairly early combo with the fire strike. But look where Mjungbong's actually put himself. He's right in the back line. They surely know something's up. There's the grab. Nay comes in as well. Everybody's bright purple. The immortality field's going to save them for the time being. So many glowing health bars, though. Dan is dead. And now it's Khan against the world. One minute and 40 seconds does remain. A beautiful position for Mjungbong to put himself in. Immortality Field, of course, saves you from death, but if you're all purple, calm, and you're not getting healed in the grab, Immortality yeah. Field goes down, and the rest of your health bar does as well. It just prolongs the inevitable in that situation. You're just living in purgatory, waiting for one way or the other to swing it. And Boston did a great job of holding on to ultimates, too. One of the biggest flaws of this team last year, although maybe it's kind of a different team, uh, but was using too many ultimates to win fights, they're still going to have this rally up. Mines. Oh, Dan is not having a good time. He's getting booped around. Faith's going to use the rally too. Only God with the high noon, but so all this is going to do is zone. Of course, like I mentioned before, Boston Outrise can play this uh, this part of the map so split. I'm 37 can sit up here basically for free as he has so much protection from things like Ball and even Valentine who can jump up to him and, and save him if needed. Nano onto Valentine as well to uh, prolong that fight and make sure that Paris Eternal have to reset. And now we're looking at one fight territory. Yeah, it's final fight, and they really only are going to have this uh, Ryan ultimate, so you got to get some value out of it. The wall comes up early. Yeah, Immortality Field uses well, Hex. And now Valentine has the copy, and they have to actually touch the payload. 20% remaining. There's the May. He's going to get Blizzard so, so fast. This is going to be so deadly for Paris Eternal to actually walk into, and Dan's already dead. Purple lands on the bat line as well. Khan and Ellie vote are having a very bad time, and there's the Blizzard. It does get eaten by Ellie Boat, yeah. though, and they actually beat to re-engage. The perfect play. Valentine's copy does end up going down, but can they actually touch? The Blizzard is going to separate a lot of Boston Uprising, and Dan ends up coming back and finding the kill onto Punk. They're going to be able to touch the payload and keep it in contestation. And only God with the high noon is going to be able to go for the zone as well. But no, goes for the fancy reload. Cancel with the high noon. Very nice as they still manage to push this payload on. There's grab ready to go though. If they can just knock them off here, it's going to be grab or shatter who can get value. They haven't really got anything to... Oh, dear me, if you take out Punk here, this is going to be good. But a perfect nano boost from the other one to keep them alive. Mine's in the back line. Grav gets thrown in as well as Valentine M37 and Punk clean up these kills. Push here for Paris Eternal will end up ending. They don't quite manage to get that third point, but it's good enough. But considering they have five minutes and 40 seconds pushing into third, you'd expect them to at least cap, but what a stellar defense there from the Uprising. 
Uh, it's kind of map dependent. This is how that map goes a lot of the time. That if defense can just get one hold going into last, that the spawn advantage and the architecture of the map generally favors the defense. It's nice to say Ellie Vote's name again, although I'm so used to saying Ellie oh, yeah. Volton. Ellie Volton Lulsish, but he set himself in a perfect position to at least give his team a chance when he eats that blizzard. And he was just waiting in the wings. You can see him on the right side of your screen, just waiting for it, knowing that that may is going to get ultimate. Uh, so really nice individual play to give his team a shot at it. And now Paris just needs to yeah, get a little bit of defense. But if Boston is able to finish it out, they're going to go into halftime two to zero. I actually don't mind this pick whatsoever. I don't think Valentine's going to stay Farah. Like, Echo, I think, is just infinitely better here. Um, so going both, against a rush yeah. bomb with a Farah, not too bad. No, Farah's you... traditionally been pretty good on kings on offense and defense because there's a lot of uh, nice high ground ledges you can perch on and then get like yeah. get super high in the skybox. Echo's just too good, though. <laughs> So, so far, we've, nice we've called Baptiste better soldier and Echo better Farah. Let's, let's see how many better heroes we can find throughout the day. I'm a little different. Uprising. What you got for us, huh? Okay. Nice little double shield. Valentine sticks on the Genji, maybe? Doesn't that matter, Boost? I don't normally see the Genji without the Nano Boost. Looks like Mjolnir huh. may be heading back to spawn. Still kind of making their minds up what they want to go. There you go. Okay, so they actually switched supports. So... Now Faith is on the map, and we have Mjumbong with the Nano for Valentine's Blade. It's going to be interesting to see how Faith does on this Baptiste. It's so important to be able to have a main support be able to switch to some of these heroes because Bapanana is a le legitimate, viable composition, and sometimes main supports aren't as comfortable on those more mechanically intensive heroes. And if you are down, you're having a rough time already. Yeah, your shield almost gets instantly destroyed. Immortality field used to actually save his life, but same with Stan 1. Man, she's keeping that ember field alive for a long time. Blank here from I'm 37. No, he gets stunned. He's dead. Yeah, yeah. A little bit too aggressive, I think. But now maybe your Ryan's in a little bit of a bad situation. Only God yet again carrying from the front line and Khan up on the high ground. Already earned himself a window. Is just chunking people out. Yeah, I think I'm 37 thought his team was going to be a little more aggressive and push them back. If you notice, the very first angle he took was through the hotel, hoping that people were going to try to play in the back corner. But Paris did not take that bait. They ended up pushing forward on them instead. And now 2.30 left on the clock. Boston Uprising is trying to reach that uh, that fight-winning combo of Nanoblade. Speed boost into the bat line. Goodbye. Goodbye, M37. Oh, only God already goes down. There's no Nano available for Valentine. Well, it's actually available now, but he doesn't actually need it. What? What? He gets three kills with a non-Nano Blade. Okay, Valentine. That's what I'm talking about. I mean, they saw the Immortality Field die, so he's like, well, I better just use it now. Everybody's so clumped up, it's going to be pretty easy for me to actually get healed so I don't instantly evaporate. And now they have Nano for the next fight as well. First point's going to get capped. Boss not rising, now moving the Palex. Yeah, very nice. Uh, it's sometimes called the Naked Blade because we're so used to seeing it with Nano because it's so vulnerable, but Valentine showing why he was such a, an important pickup for this Boston team. And showing his stuff of course a slower pace so far set for the boston offense as they look to go forward and now this is where paris can really start taking over because they have the may and may in this archway has always been brutal to deal with uh that's a lot of ults punk's gonna get frozen yes he is beat came out from paris eternal as well as that blizzard valentine's caught on the wrong side of the wall wrong side of the map really with the nearest team whatsoever naga going pretty low too immortality field having to be used by the Paris Eternal, as uh, now Punk's trying to control the fight from the top of the payload, but fighting around these walls, especially against a Reinhardt, is, is oh, it's tedious, to say the least. Sam 1 falls, and that'll be a reset now. Yeah, rising. Oh, oh, Valentine just dashed into six of them. I mean, you get a bit of ult charge, I guess. You know you're resetting, so yeah, why not? It wasn't the worst fight for Boston because they did get a lot of ultimates out of Paris and then they kind of backed up a little bit and tried to re-engage. But because that fight was so prolonged and there were a couple late deaths there, the Paris actually was able to get a lot of these charges way back up. So again, when you're in control of King's Row on defense with a May, you feel on top of the world. Really what Boston has to do is try to bait out this wall or maybe get some pressure on May by jumping through these flanks with Valentine, which is what they seem to be preferring to do. 
We are basically create, uh, recreating 300, right, with the wall. Yeah, exactly. We're funneling through them one pillar, and then Reinhardt just kind of swings it. Their numbers mean nothing. There's Valentine, there's the blade in the back. Window's already going to come out, and Valentine's a little bit too scared, and I would be too to actually face anybody behind it. But he still manages to cut down Ellie Boat. The rest of the team are going to follow suit, I believe, as well. Oh, Lucio going a little bit ham as well. Naga's still trying to win this fight, though, as he does manage to use the Blizzard on the payload without it getting eaten, and Punk gets Nana to make sure he can survive it all. Young Bowen stand one, end up going down, and Boston Uprising a little bit worse for where is that late blizzard from Naga was able to control the very end of that fight. It also seems like Khan just has not been touched. I'm not even sure where he's set up. It seems they uh, probably got a pretty good perch somewhere on Batiste. But when these fights are breaking down, no one is able to get down to him because Boston's just straight up brawling. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh but on the other team. Nope, he actually gets eaten and only got ends up going down. There you go, a speed forwards or a speed backwards for the Paris Eternal, maybe. Oh, I say that. And uh, Neptune uses the beat to rush straight into them. A nice little wall there to isolate Valentine and Punk. And the Micro Missiles will do the rest of the work. M37 is going to fall, and uh, wow, Boss not rising. Not having a good time, and now the perfect rotation of Ultimate's Hex as Paris Eternal now have that blizzard. Well, now you're starting to feel the pressure here, and if there was going to be a composition change, I think we would have seen it the last fight. Around two minutes is when you can guarantee yourself to get an ultimate in these compositions, and it just seems like they're pushing in a blizzard every single time. There's the wall, there's the blizzard, and there are a lot of dead blue players. Um, Perfect, almost right. I mean, now they have the shadow coming online. They also have uh, the window, so only gold can sit back and uh, enjoy the view. Also not rising. They haven't got this nano blade just yet. They'll be waiting for that, I can imagine. Maybe open up with the window a little bit for, uh, a little sooner. Well, I mean, if you're if you're Boston, you have to figure out that you pretty much got one last chance at an ultimate fight. Ooh, that's a big shadow from Dan. <laughs> Yo, welcome to Overwatch League team, Dan. It's nice to have you. Boss not rising, get completely team killed. You've got Nana Blade now, but Faith did unfortunately use this window. So, Myeongbong unfortunately dies last. A little bit of a stagger there, but not too bad. 45 seconds does remain, and Faith decides, well, I'm just going to play break now. We're going to run into, you're going to run into us, I'm going to run into you. It's not the worst thing to happen for Boston because they do have their win conditions set up now. Maybe that you try to open up with Bob and get some people out of position, but this Nano Blade has to come through. That's all there is to it. 30 seconds left. Let's see what Valentine's got. And it's still very difficult to get the Nano Blade off because if you use your dash, Neptuno can just speed you away. There's the Nano, there's the Blade. He's straight into the back already, but Myung already going to go down. Valentine is stunned, hasn't got a dash reset, but managed to find Khan. Only God's going to fall as well. Two kills, three kills for Valentine now as he finds the dash reset onto Neptuno. They finally break down this archway in the wall and Thermopylae eventually falls. <laughs> OT is here though in Paris Eternal. They have Lucio, so they're definitely going to have another recontest here and it might be quite favorable for them as well because Hex, look at those ultimates coming online. <sighs> Looks like it might get a little bit chilly in King's Row again. I mean, it's always winter in London as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, but they're, yeah. as long as they can get a little bit of stall, especially if you put down a window to make them back up a little bit, get that blizzard up. I think Paris is in a great spot to hold this. Nice early supercharger, however, it's going to get matched with the window. Purple in the back line, kill the Emotali field, and Dan is dead. Not quite as he's managing to stay alive somehow. Massive fire strike actually for a few people of Boston Uprising, and now the Blizzard comes out, and only God can go to town, especially with that beat as well. He's playing in melee mode because, of course, he can. The Paris Eternal, they're going to take King's Row, they're going to tie the series up. What a piece. That might have been just kind of a compositional issue there, too, because uh, you just keep going after the Genji, keep going after the Genji, and it took them like two minutes to three minutes between setting up each nano blade. and when you're not getting the value the first time around, then you kind of have to commit to it. They eventually get the value, but I think just really the pace that uh, Paris was able to set on their offense and then being able to run the May at the archway. If, if Boston's able to push there a little bit quicker and make sure that they don't have the May and that's perfect uh, King's Row spot on defense, then maybe things go differently. But so far, hey, who knows what these teams are? Who knows who's good? Who knows who's bad? I know where they were tied up 1-1. One, one. That's it. Like I said, Hex, Boston rank one. That's it. I've called it. The best early <laughs> prediction you'll ever see. Uh, I mean, Paris, Paris yeah. anybody Boston one, Paris two, uh, San Francisco yeah. three. Yeah, that's where I got it. Uh, uh, yeah, I think that's, that sounds about <laughs> right to me. Maybe the Dragon's somewhere in there as well, but, you know. It would be like that. I mean, that was just a stellar hold, really, for the Paris Eternal. Playing to their strengths as well. 
I mean, only got on a, a beautiful hit scan. Naga being able to control the, the choke play as well. And rotating the ultimates, especially against the comp that is basically relying on the Nano Blade to get stuff done. It, what, what a fantastic showing from the Paris Eternal on King's Row. It can be a little bit more difficult um, going into the later stages of the game. Oh, hello. Hey, hey, Lemon, how's it going? <laughs> Lemon's joined us. Hey, what's going on? Oh, cool. How'd you enjoy that game? Oh, uh, you no, you just have to butt in. That's just oh, how it works. <laughs> I think Kiwi is muted on VMix. She's muted on oh, VMix. She oh, couldn't hear I what she was saying. To, but... uh... hey. No, she's the mute button happened. You know, I'm just, I was lip syncing something, but what I was saying is Josh sounded really smart. I, not so smart, but it's we do have to start to a quick break. So hold on to your seats, <laughs> hold on to your butts, and we'll see you guys in a quick minute.